Okay, we're back again to with a little video. This is a video for mask number three. If you made mask number one, you'll recognize that this is exactly the same mask, but what we're gonna do differently this time is show you how to mass produce your masks. It's gonna go a lot faster. It's kind of production line um, sewing. And if you've just um, made garments, you may not have had a chance to learn about mass production sewing, but that's what we're gonna show you um, to, um, with this mask. So with mass production, what we do is we do all the pieces that we're making, we do each step for all of the pieces before we move on to the next step. Instead of making one mask and then making another mask, we do step one for all the pieces, then step two, step three. So first thing we start out with, however many masks you're gonna make, cut them all out, first of all, uh, nine by 12 pieces. And probably you're gonna probably have a minimum of 25. I've just cut 10 pieces here just to do a sample. Um, and then the second thing you're gonna do is you're gonna cut all of your elastics. So I've cut a few here. And you wanna do this in sort of a mass way too, so you can actually set up a little ruler or whatever you wanna do and find your seven and a half, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. I'm gonna cut right here seven and a half, and then you just cut away. One, two, was it six and a half? Right there, right? Three, and so on. And if you're making 25 masks, obviously you cut 50. Okay, so now you have your stack of 25 pieces, you have your stack of 50, um, elastics and you're ready to go on to the next step. Now the next thing you're gonna to need to do is find the halfway point of the long side. In other words, you're gonna find the six inch mark along here. And again, we're gonna mark these in mass. So here's what I do. I find, line it up with a ruler or however you wanna do it. Find the middle, one, two, three, four, five, six. Make a mark. You can even use a regular marker if, if you want or you can use a you know washable marker. Flip them all over sort of fan them out here and you can see your mark and just mark them all at the same time. Just all you need is a little mark. Mark them all at the same time. Okay? Just a teeny little mark there for all the pieces. And do it on the other side. Mark them all at the same time. Just some kind of a little dark mark. Okay? All marked. Next thing you do, now this is the part that's going to take you a little bit of time. One at a time, take your piece, and we're gonna pin on the elastic. So pin one here, just to the right of the mark. That's where it's gonna fold in half. Pin it on. Take the other one, right of the elastic, I mean right of the mark. Pin it on. Then now this is the trick. Make sure you keep your elastic flat. If you did um, mask one before, you'll recognize this. Uh, make sure you keep it flat and put it diagonally in the corner here. Okay. I just put lotion on my hands so I can't get the pins to work. There we go. And keep the elastic nice and flat, diagonally in the corner. Okay, this is gonna take you a little while, but Go ahead and pin all 25. After that's done, and line it all up. You really only need probably a couple of pins. Put one there and one here. On that side, and put two pins over here. Pin and pin. Okay. Do this for all 25 pieces, and then we'll go to the sewing machine. Okay, we're ready to proceed. I'm gonna show you how this assembly line sewing goes. And if you're a quilter, you've probably done something similar to this. This is something that quilters routinely do, but it just makes this kind of work go so much faster. So you've got all of your pieces here. Everything's pinned with the elastics sandwiched inside there and a couple of pins on each side. And we're just gonna start sewing. And again, the whole point is we do the same thing on all the pieces. So you're gonna backstitch first of all, 5 eighths of an inch, 
Sew the seam. Get up to the top, back stitch. Don't take it out. Put your next one here. Sew right onto it. Back stitch. Sew. Back stitch. Get your next one. Sew. Back stitch. Sew. Back stitch. Sew. Oops, forgot to back stitch. And sew and keep going till you've sewed all 25 of them together. I think I've got one more. Back stitch. And sew. Okay, now let's assume you've done all 25. You've got this big string back here. So now you just take them, cut them apart. You've got this big banner, like a banner, flags, all stitched together. Cut them all apart. And now, whoops, now we just sew down the other side. Same thing as we did before. All right, you get the idea. You get to the bottom, they're all gonna be sewn together, cut them all apart, and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, the next step, you've, you've got all of your pieces sewn, both sides sewn down like this, and you've cut them all apart. Now we're gonna sew the top, um, but you're gonna leave a gap open so that you can turn this inside out. And you wanna leave about a three finger gap. So you can mark with a pencil, just run through all your pieces, mark, 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 right in the middle. Mark, mark. Okay? And we're ready to do some production sewing again. So we're going to backstitch. We're going to sew to the mark and backstitch. Then we're going to stop and cut the thread, or at least stop sewing. Move to this line, backstitch. Go here, backstitch off. And then we're ready for the next one. Okay? I'll show you. Back stitch, stitch to the mark, back stitch, take it out, put it back in, back stitch, forward, back stitch, next one, back stitch, back stitch, take it out, cut your thread. Back stitch, back stitch, next one, back stitch, back stitch. I have a thread cutter on mine, that's why I can just pull it out. So if you're wondering what that noise is, that's a thread cutter. Back stitch. Next one, back stitch, all right, you're done. Cut them all apart and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so these have been cut all apart. Now all you do is turn them right side out. Shouldn't be too hard. Push through. You'll see an elastic there. You can just pull on that if that helps. Turn them right side out. Pull on the elastic and just pull till you have a nice, till it's all a nice rectangle and do that for all of them. And then actually, you know, you can do these one at a time. What you wanna do then is stitch all the way across the top. The hole's right here that we just pulled it through. It's right there. You're gonna stitch that closed. So just back stitch, 
fairly close to the edge. All the way across. Back stitch. Do that for all of your pieces. Pull them out, back stitch. Then I will show you the next thing we're gonna do. We're gonna put the pleats on the side. Now, this is about five and a half inches. And ideally, we wanna get it down to about three inches. So we're just gonna make some pleats and put a pin in. Doesn't, it's not super critical. We're just trying to reduce this five and a half inches down to about three inches. And usually three little tucks like this will do it. So let me take a guess. Let's see how I did. Yeah, there, see? Okay, and we're gonna pleat both sides. And you're gonna do this to all your pieces. Put the tin pins in first, and then we'll stitch them assembly line style. There you go. That's one done. Do all of them. So you stitched across the top here. Um, and actually, before you do the pleating, um, you need to stitch on the other side too. This will just hold everything in place when it goes through the laundry. So just stitch on the fold. Okay, and then you're ready to proceed with the pleating. Okay, let me show you one more time how to pleat. Doesn't matter if the sewn end is at the bottom or the top. Um, these don't have a nose wire, so it's not a question of comfort. So, so once again, pinch, turn it down, pin in, and you're just trying to get down to about three inches. Ooh, that wasn't very even. I'm gonna do that one again. I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so we're ready to sew. Um, you wanna sew so that you're sewing down the pleats like this. So it goes in the machine like this. Back stitch. You can leave your pins in or take them out, whichever you prefer. And then back stitch. Now, ready to set the second one in. Oops. Oh, I forgot to tell you, make sure that your pleats on both sides are going the same direction. So if they're pleating down on this side, it has to pleat down on this side too. That's probably pretty obvious, but. And we're back stitching. You could back stitch all the way back up to the top if you want like this to really hold them firm like that. And then you'll come down and it'll be three rows of stitching. That'll never come out. See, this one I had the stitch at the top. Doesn't really matter. Back stitch. And one more and then I've got something to show you. All right. Now you are going to find when you go to sew the second side, no matter how you sew it, you're gonna be sewing against the pleats. It's just the way it is. So um, it makes it a little bit more difficult, but I know you can handle it. Just make sure they stay flat as you go over them. And again, the pleats are gonna be pointing up just the way it goes. Back stitch. Just make sure they stay down as you go over them. Back up. So you can see how fast these masks go together. You can do 25 masks really quickly when you do production line sewing like this. Oops, back stitch it. Cut them apart, take the pins out, and you are done. Let's see how it looks.
Ta-da! Lovely. Okay, have fun.